Everyone loves a good story. And as a curious young boy, I was entranced by my father's stories. They helped me make sense of the big, complex world. But I was puzzled when he'd say, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Perhaps he shared stories for entertainment. But if I was using them to make sense of the world, did it matter if they weren't true? Only later in life did I realise that we all tell ourselves stories all the time. Stories about other people. Stories about the world and stories about ourselves. And these stories, I would find, are all in the mind. Many years ago, I was receiving feedback from a manager called Thomas. Thomas leaned forward, looked me in the eye, lowered his voice and said, the truth is, you're a bit weird. <laughs> when someone asks you a question, there's this awkward pause before you respond. I was shocked, but grateful to Thomas for sharing his frank feedback with me. I did, however, know a few things about myself from a lifetime of experience. By the age of four, I had developed a serious stutter. My mother took me to a speech therapist who taught me to slow down and think before I spoke. My speech improved and became one less way that I felt different to other kids. Slowing down and thinking before speaking became such a habit that I'd forgotten that I did it right until Thomas shared the story that he told himself about me. The story that I was a bit weird. How often do we tell ourselves stories about other people when we don't really know the facts? Stories, you'll find, that are all in the mind. We also use stories to explain the world around us. In 2003, Australian biology professor David Sinclair showed that a compound found in red wine called resveratrol increased the life of yeast by 70% and had a range of health benefits in mice Use of his research went viral as red wine drinkers all over the world drank to a long, healthy life. Unfortunately, you'd need to drink a thousand bottles of red wine every single day to get the same dose of resveratrol that was given to each mouse. That amount of alcohol will kill you and alcohol consumption is a leading cause of premature death. But now, I'm letting the facts get in the way of a good story. And this story you'll find, it's all in the mind. The most powerful stories we tell are stories about ourselves. They define our narrative identity, our own personal myth. When we want someone to know who we are, we share our story with them. And when we want to know who we are, we tell ourselves a story. If you grow up without feeling valued, then you may tell yourself the story that you're never good enough. If you grow up without feeling seen and heard, then you may tell yourself the story 
that your thoughts and feelings aren't important. And if you grow up without feeling loved, then you may tell yourself the story that you're not worthy of love. Your story, you'll find, it's all in the mind. In other words, once you understand your story, then you have the power to change it. We all have our own unique stories, but there are two common types of stories. First is the transformative story or hero's journey. The hero overcomes major challenges and is transformed by the experience. People with this story feel more in control, experience growth and contribute more to society. The other type of story is the victim story. The victim suffers misfortune through no personal fault and has no transformation experience. People with this story feel more anxious and depressed. The fascinating thing about these two stories is that they can be based on the same facts. In other words, these stories you'll find are all in the mind. I was inspired when I read the story of Eddie Yaku. In 1938, 18-year-old Eddie and his German-Jewish family were sent to Auschwitz, which Eddie described as hell on earth. Eddie's family was executed, but Eddie survived because his mechanical engineering skills were useful. Auschwitz was evacuated in 1945 and Eddie was sent on a death march. But he escaped. When he was found by the American army, Eddie weighed just 28 kilograms. Once Eddie recovered, he promised to spend his life teaching and sharing kindness, tolerance and happiness with everybody he met. Eddie moved to Australia in 1950 and in 2020, as Eddie was turning 100 years old, his book, The Happiest Man on Earth, was published. How can someone who went through hell on earth believe themselves to be the happiest man on earth? The reason is that Eddie's story was transformative. To learn your transformative story, ask yourself three questions. First, what major challenges have you overcome in your life? Second, what have you learnt as a result of overcoming those challenges? And third, how can you use what you've learnt to help other people? Just like Eddie, that may be by sharing your personal story. My transformative story is the story of a shy, awkward boy who overcame a stutter and fear of speaking to find his voice and be standing here today. Your transformative story, you'll find, it's all in the mind.